Jeopardy, the category. American history. Think about it. Make your wagers. All right, we're going to try something a little different tonight. I've got the television on uh, this side. Welcome to the final wager. I'm Keith Williams. We'll see how it works out. It's going to be kind of awkward for me to write my final response while looking in this direction, but maybe I'll just go over on that side of the board. I haven't really thought about it. Fuzzy. Better have gotten that Capitol Records clue right. He's got 13.8. Allen, 9,600. Joe, a lot of misses there toward the end. 4,000. Uh, you know, I, I don't talk about this too much because I don't have a way to verify it, but I often get the sense, and I think I've talked about this in the past, I often get the sense that Alex sometimes gives vocal intonations when he knows the next clue in that category, if they're playing it in order, is the Daily Double. And I was pretty sure he did it on both Daily Doubles and the Double Jeopardy round, particularly on the architecture clue that Joe decided not to go for at the bottom of the board, instead jumping over to the $2,000 clue and 12 letter words or whatever that was, which Buzzy then picked up and then went back smartly and got that daily double. I don't know how to go back and uh, verify that. Uh, I could, I guess, record the audio from that part. I know I've thought that a few times in the past and have been wrong, but for the most part, I've been very on key. So let's see, wagering here. Uh, at least Joe went for 2,000 in another category, but that the Daily Double? No, the Daily Double wasn't that category, so it's fine. 9,619.2, so it's going to be 5,400. Uh, if Buzzy's wrong, he's going to have 8,400. Now i got to look back across my shoulder. All right, this might not work too well, but it works better in the, in the grand scheme of things in my room. Uh, 4,000 has to be Joe's wager. Uh, and most here, 8,400, 1,200. And uh, that's unfortunate for Joe because that keeps him locked out. Uh, yeah, nothing much else. I guess with mind games we can do. Doesn't seem right for some reason. Oh, it is right. Okay. Uh, if Alan goes for his 1200, she'll have 10 8. So uh, Buzzy could wager at most 3000, and it would be okay for. Ellen's wager 9600, but at least, uh, what's that, 1200 plus 1200, no, 3400, 7200 at a minimum. Wager at least that much. <clears throat> and uh, we got American history to deal with here. I like this category, but uh, let's see what our players do. Uh, that. Savvy Wager came up again tonight from Alex, and it just goes to show that anytime Alex talks about wagering, he's wrong, and he could be trolling me. He probably doesn't care what I do, but he could just be trying to piss me off with all these mentions of no harm, no foul, savvy wagers, blah, 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 blah. I got more to talk about, especially about airbags for some reason. But first we gotta play this. Great subject for final American history. Here's the clue, players. A stimulus to the courageous. The twenty-five thousand dollar Ortig prize offer of nineteen ninety. Oh God, are these kids we close? In his success eight years later. Thirty seconds. Good luck. I guess this is a little bit harder than last night. You just have to know I just know off the top of my head that Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic in nineteen twenty seven. And someone who's courageous, that obviously fits the bill, but that's that's even more instant for me over the last two nights, because the last two nights were just so easy that they made you think a little bit more, or that maybe they were trying to pull a trick on you. But this is, uh, of course, I'm going to my face if we can miss this, but... So obviously we're talking about someone who did something really big in 1927. Let's see if Joe came up with the correct response. He wrote down quickly. He wrote down for his Lindbergh. Yes, indeed. The nonstop solo flight from America to France. And you add $39.95, taking you to $7,995. Let's go to Ellen. She had $9,600. Her response, she wasn't able Small to... Small wager, though, anything. I bet. So she will lose a bit Why? of 42 one dropping her to $53.99. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was our champion, is our champion. 
has 13,000 people who picked the wrong correct response. What did he lose, however? 5,401. He's left with 83.99, and today, that is enough. Ooh, ooh, someone had a bad wager, and I won as a result. Hey, no, I have nothing against that. You can win because someone else wagers dumb. Uh, then, hey. That's why you come in prepared, and you make the right wager, and uh, if the other player wagers correctly, then that's fine. But you get the added bonus of maybe this person is going to wager uh, in a bad way. So I guess it wasn't as easy as I thought it was. 1927 didn't click for a lot of people, but that is uh, one of those Pavlovian years that I talk about a lot. Whenever I see it, that's the first thing that's going to come to mind. Uh, I can't think of anything else that would be big in that year. Uh, so airbags. <clears throat> That was, uh, there's that clue where I think Joe guessed seatbelts first, and then it wasn't right. So there was only one answer for a, a safety mechanism, but in 1952, a little late for seatbelts, I'd say. Maybe a three-point harness from Volvo would be a good guess. Uh, but there is a commercial I saw tonight that had to do with a uh, pitching a car because it had Wi-Fi for your children. And so it, it compares... You know, some other car, you know, kids are kids, and they're talking about ice cream and yelling, and dad is probably reaching back and saying, hey, don't make me pull this car over, and such, but I haven't thought about this too much, but I think I wouldn't want to give my kids a tablet until they're 12 or 13, particularly on a long car ride, because part of the fun of going on a long car ride is watching the scenery, playing games with license plates or with exit signs or with funny town names not playing some dumb game on your Wi-Fi enabled car or just sitting to yourself and not interacting with the world around you and I'm a little afraid to see what's going to happen to the current generation that's growing up when they get older how they have the ability to talk to other people to interact to imagine things outside of uh, an iPhone screen or an iPad screen. So uh, yeah, that's uh, denying your kid all those things just for the sake of some peace and quiet for yourself seems a little selfish. Maybe I am just seeing this the wrong way, but uh, that's my rant for the evening. So Buzzy uh, gets a little lucky tonight. And uh, he'll go for number four tomorrow. Funny, we had a six-time champion that he dethroned earlier this week, and now he is setting himself up for some TOC potential as well. We'll see what happens come tomorrow, and I hope you'll join me then, right here on Final Wager.